Welcome to Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, aka Dungeon Dad, and today we've got something special crawling its way to you. Being October, the spooky month, I know many of you are gearing up for your Halloween sessions or something horror related. So today I've got something kind of creepy that you can maybe use in that game. And of course, the other monsters throughout the rest of the month will be somewhat horror themed. Now, I know when we talk about the Crawling Claw, you're probably thinking that's not an old, obscure monster. That's something that exists in the monster manual. In fact, you can go look it up right now. It's CR0. There it is. Aside from being kind of creepy, it doesn't really do much. To be honest, fighting one of these things is kind of lame even for a level one party. So today we're gonna try to make this monster awesome. In the fourth edition supplement, Open Grave, the same book where the Forsaken Shell comes from, a monster I covered a couple weeks ago, you will also find the Crawling Claw. But what's interesting is you won't find just the Crawling Claw, you will find something called the Crawling Claw Swarm. As I said, just one of these things isn't really anything to be too worried about. It can be a cool kind of set piece to set the tone for a necromancer's tower or something like that. However, a swarm of these things is definitely something to be afraid of. So today, aside from being a pile of hands, we're going to talk about just what this creature is and can do. We're going to talk about some ways to improve this monster, make it a little more deadly and a little more interesting. And of course, some ways that you can use this monster in your game. Now, like just about every swarm in 5th edition D&D, this creature is going to be resistant to non-magical damage. This, of course, is because when you have a swarm of things, if you're just swiping and cutting a few of them down, it's not really going to do a whole lot to the overall group. However, unlike any of the swarms in D&D 5th edition, this one is comprised of a bunch of hands, or claws as it were. They're pretty fast with a speed of 40, which means they're not going to be zipping around the battlefield, however they will be able to outrun 90% of your PCs. They've also got a climb speed of 20 though, meaning that they can navigate fairly easily around dungeons and tunnels. So just imagine setting up a situation where the party has to get down a long corridor and then they're cut off from behind by a swarm of crawling claws. If you've got severed humanoid hands crawling on the ground walls and ceiling chasing after them if that's not horrific i don't know what is and as far as seeing their targets as you would expect these guys rely on tremor sense this kind of mixes things up a little bit because for one being quiet isn't going to help you sneak around a swarm of crawling claws you could be the stealthiest rogue in the world but as long as you are physically touching the ground or some surface they will be able to see you see you they'll know you're there However, one kind of cool thing here is if the party has a way to levitate or temporarily fly or something to that effect, they can essentially sneak by a room of these no matter how close they actually get to the creature, as long as they're not touching them or the ground, the crawling claws will be unable to see them. Now, as far as actual attacks that deal damage, they have only one. It's called Swarm of Claws and it does a pretty respectable amount of damage. It's not going to outright kill someone in one attack, well, hopefully not. But it's enough to make this creature a real threat and the players aren't going to want to be mauled by a swarm of claws. Go figure. Now that is all that's in the book. And to be completely honest here, I'm not faulting the designers because that is realistically how you would expect a swarm of crawling claws to behave. The real value in this creature, much like the crawling claw itself, is the creep factor. They're very good at creeping out players and being used as more of a set piece for a horror or undead themed dungeon more than an actual threat. However, I've got some ways we can modify this monster to make it a little more menacing. For starters, I think this creature should absolutely have the ability to hold its targets in place. So I've added an ability to the Crawling Claw Swarm that states, if a creature starts its turn within 5 feet of the swarm, it has to make a dexterity save. If it fails, its move action is consumed by the Crawling Claw Swarm, as all these hands are grabbing onto the creature and holding it in place. If it succeeds, it's able to move, but only at half its speed. The rationale behind this is because in order to succeed your deck save, you're basically pushing off all these hands that are reaching up and grabbing onto you. The specific wording here functions exactly like the spell Entangle. I feel pretty confident about giving the creature this ability because as we all know, the spell Entangle isn't really broken and giving it to this creature shouldn't be a problem. It's gonna be an inconvenience for the players for sure, but it's not going to be something so powerful it outright kills them. Now, the other thing I couldn't help but wonder while I was researching this monster is what if we had a giant claw? And I don't mean one of these undead hands that someone enlarged. Literally, if a lich or a necromancer or whatever severed the hand of a stone giant, say, and then turned it into a crawling claw, what would that look like? Well, it would probably look like a giant hand. 
I mean, it literally would be a giant's hand. And I mean, you could reasonably do this with any creature that has claws or hands, but a version of the crawling claw that is much larger and has some more abilities could function sort of as the focus of an encounter with the crawling claw swarm kind of around it to act as minions. So just for fun, I have handcrafted for you a creature called the giant's claw. I'll put a separate link to the stat block for the giant's claw right under the link to the crawling claw swarm in the description below. Now, moving on to how we're gonna actually use this creature in our game. The idea of a crawling claw or just some form of disembodied hand functioning as a monster has been ingrained into pop culture for a very long time. That helps us as DMs generally for a few reasons. For one, the players generally won't question where this creature came from. Whose hand was it before it became a crawling claw? Doesn't really matter, it's just a crawling claw hand monster. They're simply evil hands, possibly under the control of a necromancer or some other creature. But if you choose to provide that context, it can make this monster a lot more interesting. Perhaps in a particularly brutal setting, there's a city where anyone who's caught stealing has their hands chopped off. Those hands are then thrown into the pit where all discarded things end up. And perhaps an aspiring necromancer has been rummaging through the remains and recycling these hands. If any of you have purchased and read through the Tomb of Annihilation, in the first city that the player go to, there is a situation almost perfectly set up for this. I actually wrote my notes for doing this video before I actually read the Tomb of Annihilation. And when I saw that there was an area described almost exactly as I had described it in my notes, I actually laughed. Because in that port city, there is a pit where all the garbage and refuse of the city ends up. Just saying. So to you dungeon masters running Tomb of Annihilation, hint hint, you could also set this up in the context of a great battle. Perhaps the bloodstained earth has given rise to all sorts of necromantic horrors, and now swarms of dismembered body parts that once belonged to the living are coming to life. Or unlife, I guess. And as an extension of something I brought up in the Forsaken Shell video, I thought of a really grunt of gruesome way to use these claws too. Imagine if you have a lich. And like I mentioned in the Forsaken Shell video, that Lich's skin is actually just a Forsaken Shell that he uses to disguise himself. Now imagine that his hands are also severed and are actually Crawling Claws. If I was gonna do this, I would make a variant of the Crawling Claw that maybe did a little bit of necrotic damage and was able to levitate. So now you've got this undead necromancer who when the party approaches him, his skin kind of unzips and peels off, revealing it's a separate monster. And then maybe each of his hands come off and start floating on either side of him, revealing they are also two separate monsters. If you really want to go all the way here too, you could even make the skull of the skeleton a flame skull. Or if it's a high level encounter, a demi lich. And then of course the body would just function as a skeleton. So you've basically got these five different undead creatures kind of making up one thing. Perhaps some undead or evil magic user has suffused his consciousness into each aspect of this amalgamation. Basically what I'm getting at here is using some of the monsters I've covered as well as a couple of them that are in the monster manual, you could make the most terrifying undead version of Voltron in the world. Now that is all for today, and this was hands down one of the most fun times I've had researching a monster. If you enjoyed listening to me talk about it and you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. I have at least one new video every week. And if you're interested, we've also got a Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff set up. You can find the links to that in the description below. And if you want to give me a hand in another way, I do have a Patreon set up now as well. Now I do want to give a special shout out to those of you who have already signed up with the Patreon because as is no secret, I'm kind of new to this. And for you guys to just support me right at the get-go means the world. And also to all of you just watching this on YouTube right now, I really do appreciate you guys and thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful and hopefully it gave you some ideas for some creepy adventures for October. And if you're watching this in the future and it's not October anymore, anytime is a good time to scare your players. So I'm sure this monster will come in handy for you too. But like I said, that's all for this week. I'll see you next time.